So how much should you be paying for a motorcycle? And it does depend on its if it's new or if it's old. Meaning used. Me, I fall into the latter. I love used motorcycles. I always joke that, hey, man, I wish these rubs would keep doing what they're doing because I always get good deals on bikes. Just like my 98 Classic, where he only rode it 12,000 miles, let it sit, and I picked it up for like $6,000. And that's the important thing right there. It depends on your budget, but most importantly, it depends on the brand that you're getting. If you're looking to get into a Harley, you're spending some money. I always say that a Harley is a big investment, hopefully pays off in the long run. They rarely lose their value. But at the same time, they're like a mortgage payment, especially if you go new. Now, there's other motorcycles out there like that. There's Indian motorcycles. They're on about the same price point as Harley-Davidson is. But then you get into the Japanese products like the Yamahas, the Kawasaki's, the Suzuki's. And I've always been a big fan of the Suzuki Boulevard. I recently just sold one to go ahead and go get a classic. Going back to the average price that you're looking for in a used bike now you're looking at about 10 grand if you're looking to get a new one you're looking anywhere from 20 to sixty thousand dollars and i've always said to myself that i'd never ever pay for a motorcycle that's more than fifteen thousand dollars I did that with my 2015 Lowrider that I have as well. And that was a big stretch for me because I've always been used to paying maybe anywhere between three and $6,000. The classic I got right now that used, I paid 62 or 63 after negotiating with the dealership. And that's one thing you're going to want to do. Never pay what the dealership is asking if you're going to a dealership. You got to remember, the first thing you want to do is look up the wholesale or trade in amount of money that they would give out for a motorcycle and then when they're trying to resell it they're going to go to the upper end of the retail price and that's the room you got to negotiate with mostly with harley davidson if we're looking at that one those are the bikes i know when you're getting into your upper 30s all the way up from there that the bike that mostly people want to go grab if you have the money is something like a street glide road glide many people want to go to the upper end brand new on these things which hey god bless if you have the money to do it god bless man but you're looking over twenty thousand dollars right off the bat go used is what i say go used now, if you don't care about brands, because let's face it, you're paying for the name of that motorcycle. A lot of fans of Japanese, German, English, what have you, would say that Harley-Davidson is lacking in technology, which I have to agree with. Come on, you got liquid-cooled engines out there that are just bad badass okay uh where harley davidson falls real short but harley davidson does have accessories the accessories you can do with the harley davidson is phenomenal most of the aftermarket you know you got kirk out there you got jp sns all of them they really cater to the Harley Davidson model because it's so very easy to customize that bike the way you want it. Where if you have a Jap bike, 
it gets harder and harder because a lot of these aftermarket joints, they really don't want to cater to that crowd because they know a lot of them don't work on their own motorcycle. And I'm going to get all kinds of hate on that one. But it's true. A lot of people that don't ride Harleys or Indian, it's kind of uh, iffy because they don't got a real good aftermarket thing, don't work on their bikes. now. That's half true, because a lot of the kids that ride rockets, now they put some work into them motorcycles. They're more performance-based, and them type of motorcycles, actually, you can get cheaper new where used, if they were worked on, you're looking at a lot more money. And then you got to take in consideration your location. Location, location, location. You're looking at a wide range on that payment scale right there. In California, they're going to be higher priced. And on the East Coast, again, higher priced. Where the Midwest, pretty decent. Down South, the best. That's in my personal opinion, you're going to get a better deal down South. Or Texas, let's take Texas, for example, where if you're in Canada, per se, it gets even worse. Australia, even worse. British, uh, you know, the Britain, even worse than that. Harley Davidson's are out of reach for a lot of people. And if you look at some of the clubs, a lot of them don't ride Harley Davidson in them countries because they're so expensive. So your location does matter, and to overcome that, you can go to a lot of these groups on Facebook and check around with what deals you have, but you got to be able to say, okay, let's include the cost of the shipping, does it negate what uh, you know I'd be losing by just purchasing something here? That's a, a you know what, that is a real big issue right there and when it comes to the engine size you gotta you know you gotta put that in there now you know where my 98 bone stock i'm gonna have to put a cam in that sucker the whole nine yards no matter what i do with it it's never ever gonna be beefed up enough to keep up with a 103 a 110 a 117 it's never going to happen. That's why you're going to pay more because you're going to pay more for that performance. That's just a fact of life. Not to mention the technology, man. Uh, you know, your fuel injection systems. If you're on a bagger or something like that, all the bells and whistles that you're going to be paying for. And you're also, I believe, paying for an upfront cost for the accessories you're going to put on your bike. Hell, if you want to change the pipes on some of these things, like on the lowrider, I got to put forward controls on it. Easy 900 bucks. Then the pipes, easy 1200 bucks. So you're paying out and you got to keep that within your price range. Meaning you better be good at negotiating that way. Eventually you're going to say, okay, I negotiated it down so good that i can afford something like this because if you start out at sticker price you're gonna get screwed in the deal because you're gonna be putting out extra extra money for something you gotta you could have done and avoided in the first place uh then of course the transmission comes into play like this uh everybody loves that six speed and i love the six speed on the low rider but at the same time with the classic, I love the five speed because you just sit there and it's only made to cruise any damn way. It's not there to, uh, you know, get up there and get jacked. So I would have to say 15,000 is my limit. I do not want to get into a brand new bike because right now with the percentage rates that are out there, oh my God, hell no. Oh, hell no. Ain't happening with me. Then you're looking at a bike payment of maybe 
five to seven hundred dollars a month and again god bless you if you can afford that kind of bike but a lot of people can't you hear a lot of people complaining about harley davidson and how high priced that they are well that's just with the times now that's the way they work they got a different demographic that they're trying to get into or target and they're just not targeting, you know, old school scooter, uh, scooter tramps anymore. With the new bike, though, I do have to say warranty. Warranties are important. I found that out on my 2015 Lowrider. Since it only had under 10,000 miles, and this is what you got to also bring into uh, effect here. The seals and the gaskets are usually going to be dry rotted on an older bike. I'm watching that on uh, the Classic right now. So you're always going to want a warranty if you go to a dealership. I got the three-year extended warranty. And it came in handy six months after uh, I bought it because the front fork seals went out of the damn thing. It really did. And I was like, oh, God, thank God I uh, got that warranty. Because at that point, taking it to a Harley dealer to fix, you're looking at an easy $1,000. Easy $1,000 for that. So I was lucky. You want to get that warranty, but you got to figure it into the price as well. Now, used ones are always going to be extended. Where brand new ones, I don't know if you get a 5 or a 7 in there. But you have to say, is it worth the price that I'm paying for that new one? And I suggest going around and shopping around. Just don't go to your local Harley-Davidson dealership. Go in a, like a 300-mile radius of other dealerships because you're going to have different negotiation skills that you could use on them that you maybe wouldn't be able to use on your local dealer. Plus, their sticker prices are going to be a lot different. But again, if you're buying a used motorcycle, look at the trade-in value first. That's the number you want to bank on. Because they're always going to charge the high retail price. How I got the Classic, I got $3,000 off that sucker. And you have to be able to walk away when it's not in your price range. A lot of people, they want to spend lots of money. They're not educated about the interest rates on it. They're, they don't know how much the insurance is going to cost. Man, I'm paying some insurance right now on that lowrider. And they don't take that type of stuff in effect. And you're going to want full coverage. And they usually say, well, you're up north. You only need to keep it six months out of the year. No. What if the garage burns down? What if this happens? What if that happens? You're covered. Make sure you keep that coverage year-round. But that's something, unfortunately, people don't think about. So you got all this type of stuff that goes into what you should be paying for a motorcycle. But no, the average cost is about $10,000. That's why you see a lot of people on 750 cc's and lower, or the Sportster for the Harley, is because that's what they can afford to get into. Never get into something you cannot afford, because in the end, you're going to lose it if you're financing. Me, I suggest cash. Yeah, I did finance the lowrider and stuff like that, but it was easy with the negotiation, what I got on the price and payments and all that stuff. It's in my comfortable region. But just because you like a bike doesn't mean go out there and do whatever you can to get it. Be smart, people, because these are a lot of money. They are investments. Hell, you to get a car for some of these, a brand new car for some of these uh, used bikes that are out there, the price on them. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Rock on. Share this video, man. It really helps the new channel get going. I'm having a ball doing this. 
Rock out. Got a lot to say. Can't hold it in this time. Got no fear.